In this video, we will discuss our technique for the closed reduction of simple elbow dislocations, as well as the associated elbow hematoma block procedure for pre-procedure analgesia. A brief background on elbow dislocations. They are the number one most common dislocation in children and number two in adults behind shoulders. The most common age group is 10 to 20 year olds, and they account for 10 to 25% of injuries to the elbow. About 80% are posterior lateral dislocations and around 25% have concomitant fractures. Elbow dislocations can be categorized into simple or complex. Complex elbow dislocations are associated with fracture and have three main mechanisms that lead to three different patterns of injuries as displayed here. Complex elbow dislocations are beyond the scope of this video and we will focus on simple elbow dislocations or those without associated fracture which are nearly always posterior lateral dislocations. First, we will describe our procedure for the elbow hematoma block for pre-procedure analgesia for the reduction. The elbow hematoma block involves using the lateral portal to the elbow. Indications uh, for aspiration only include diagnosis of septic arthritis or gout of the elbow. Indications for aspiration and hematoma block are for pain control. The two main scenarios are a radial head fracture to provide pain relief to adequately assess range of motion and presence of a mechanical block to motion, as well as elbow dislocations to provide analgesia during close reduction. The lateral portal is also used during elbow arthroscopy. Here we have two lateral x-rays of the elbow demonstrating the location of the hematoma block. In the non-dislocated elbow, the hematoma block will be performed in the lateral soft spot of the elbow between the tip of the olecranon, the lateral epicondyle, and the radial head. These can be palpated easily on most patients and guide the placement of your needle. In the dislocated elbow, the anatomy is skewed, however. These landmarks can still be palpated and the soft spot into the joint is usually a larger area given the dislocated nature of the elbow. It can be helpful to mark out these landmarks on the patient to guide your needle placement in between the tip of the olecranon, lateral epicondyle, and radial head. This following image demonstrates where the soft spot is in relation to the underlying bony anatomy in this patient with an elbow dislocation. As with most aspirations or injections, there are risks to this procedure, including infection, iatrogenic chondral injury, bleeding, and lidocaine toxicity, which can be avoided with aspiration prior to injection to ensure that you are not in a vascular structure. The adequate supply should be gathered prior to procedure, including lidocaine without epinephrine, one 21 to 23 gauge needle for skin anesthesia, one 18 gauge needle for the joint aspiration and lidocaine injection, and two 10 cc syringes. Appropriate setup, informed consent, and timeout should be performed. The patient should be seated with their elbow at the level of the examiner's elbow while the examiner is standing. This is in anticipation of the future close reduction. Allow for the patient's elbow to sit in the most comfortable position of flexion which provides the largest joint volume and the larger joint entry point. Assemble all supplies to prevent delays during the procedure. This is a video demonstration of the elbow hematoma block. First, this lateral soft spot to the elbow is prepped with chloroprep solution. Next, the skin is anesthetized with a 21 to 23 gauge needle and a few cc's of lidocaine. A wheel of lidocaine is injected in the sub Q tissue, and then a 10 cc syringe that is empty with an 18 gauge needle is inserted into the lateral soft spot of the elbow into the elbow joint. Once in the joint, the hematoma should be aspirated, and it can be necessary to change the direction of the needle a few times to break up old hematoma. Once all the hematoma is aspirated, the 10 cc syringe is detached from the 18 gauge needle, which should be left in the joint. The 10 cc syringe with the lidocaine is then attached to the 18 gauge needle, and then the lidocaine is injected into the elbow joint. There should be no resistance as the lidocaine is injected into the elbow joint. Gauze can be used to tamponade the injection site. 
Next, we will describe our technique for closed reduction of the simple elbow dislocation. The closed reduction of an elbow dislocation involves three main components. Axial traction distal to the elbow, counter traction proximal to the elbow, and gradual flexion of the elbow. There are a variety of maneuvers that can be performed, however most require additional help. In the following video, we will demonstrate our method for performing closed reduction of elbow dislocations with one person. The patient should be seated and positioned at a height that allows the examiner to place their elbow in the patient's elbow comfortably. The patient's injured hand is gripped by the examiner's contralateral hand, and the examiner's elbow is placed in the patient's antecubital fossa. Counter traction will be provided by the examiner's elbow in the antecubital fossa. Axial traction will be pulled through the hand, and gradual flexion will be provided by the gradual flexion of the examiner's own elbow. A palpable as well as audible clunk should be heard during the closed reduction of the elbow. Following reduction, the patient's elbow should be taken through a range of motion to assess the stable range of motion of that elbow in both flexion and extension and pronosupination, and these should be documented in the assessment. Dry gauze is placed over the hematoma block site, and then a posterior slab long arm splint should be applied. The patient should be immobilized in a comfortable, stable position of elbow flexion, and the splint should extend past the wrist to prevent pronosupination. If the patient's elbow is extremely unstable, it will tend to dislocate in extension and may require immobilization at greater than 90 degrees of elbow flexion. In addition, the wrist may need to be positioned in pronation for lateral injuries or supination for medial injuries. The patient's extremity should then be placed in a sling for comfort and they should be instructed to avoid heavy lifting with that upper extremity of anything greater than five pounds. The following x-rays demonstrate post-reduction x-rays of the elbow in a long arm splint.